we're underdogs to the great red power of hockey. It's a bunch of college kids who look like the boys next door. They weren't superstar athletes. I mean, people were only getting to know their names. You had this coach and these ugly plaid coats, you know, who was kind of the grouchy guy next door coach, you know, the high school coach. They beat the big red machine. It really was a big deal for America. And it became even more important because Moscow was the host of the 1980 Olympics. So here, the United States was hosting the Winter Olympics in this little town in upstate New York, Lake Placid, which by the, by, by the second week, everybody realized there were transportation problems, there were problems with venues, there was all kinds of trouble. The place was just too small to handle the influx of people and the size of the event. But this hockey team saved it all for everybody. They were amateur athletes. Most of them were playing for the love of the game. Herb's goal was to get them to focus their hatred on him and be unified and become one. He had a bunch of 21-year-old guys, most of whom this was going to be the highlight of their athletic career, and he manipulated them in a way that every coach tries to manipulate players. You're dealing with all these diverse personalities, all these large egos, all these guys who are the best kid on the block back home, you know, when they went to the rink. And now you got to get them to play as one for national pride. Now that seems like a pretty easy thing to sell once it starts going. Once adrenaline's flowing and they realize what they can do for themselves and that they're playing for a kind of posterity that most people don't get to play for, I, I, I would think you had a very willing audience there if, if you're the coach.